In 1995, Umberto Eco, one of the most globally famous writers and author of such best-selling books as Foucault's Pendulum and The Name of the Rose, took part in a symposium held by the Italian and French departments of Columbia University in New York, on the day when the anniversary of the liberation of Europe from Nazism is celebrated. Echo addressed the audience with his essay Eternal Fascism, that contained a warning to the entire world about the fact that the threat of fascism and Nazism persist even after the end of the World War II. We need an enemy to give people hope. Someone said that patriotism is the last refugee of cowards. Those without moral principles usually wrap a flag around themselves and the pastors always talk about the purity of the race. National identity is the last bastion of the dispossessed. But the meaning of identity is now based on hatred, on hatred for those who are not the same. Hatred has to be cultivated as a civic passion. Published in Russia, the book State Policy of Glorification of Nazism in Armenia by military historian Oleg Kuznetsov reiterates Umberto Eco's words. Kuznetsov begins his book with the words the leader of his home country said on May 9, 2019, on the day when victory over fascism is celebrated. Today we see how in a number of states they consciously distort the events of war, how they idolize those who, having forgotten about honor and human dignity, served the Nazis, how they shamelessly lie to their children, betray their ancestors. Oleg Kuznetsov's book is a warning that is not aimed at inciting ethnic hatred between Armenia and Azerbaijan. It is a plea to exclude the falsification of historical facts that make it possible to manipulate ordinary people from the state policy. Glorification in various forms of Nazism in Armenia through memorialization of memory of the Nazi criminal Garegin Nje and his openly racist theory of the Tsekachron, the doctrine of the Armenian supermen, is the subject of a purposefully and systematically conducted state policy, says author. The Third Committee of the UN, General Assembly, adopted a draft resolution initiated by Russia on combating glorification of Nazism. 121 states voted in favor of the document. 55 abstained, and two opposed it. It is known that the issue of the unified struggle against Nazism and its modern followers has always been a fundamental for Azerbaijan and its political leadership, without any tolerance of even a slightest compromise. As it has been for Russia. President Ilham Aliyev has repeatedly spoken both at the United Nations Assembly and at the meeting of the Council of CIS Heads of State about the state policy of glorifying Nazism in Armenia, citing irrefutable facts to prove this assertion. At the meeting of CIS Council of Defense Ministers, President Aliyev not only supported Russia's policy to fight Nazism and neo-Nazism on a global scale, but also expanded its scope, pointing to Armenia as the country of victorious Nazism. Armenia now has new government, but the authorities are not in a hurry to eliminate the Nazi legacy of their predecessors thus demonstrating their commitment to the practices of glorification 
of Nazism that had been adopted in the country prior to the COP that took place two years ago. The new leaders of Armenia, headed by Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, could not or did not want to radically change the situation in their country, and found themselves either hostages or ideological continuators of glorification of Nazism that had been practiced before their coming to power. In what way will today's experiments, carried out by Armenia's politicians and based on manipulations of historical facts, affect the lives of ordinary residents? of the country that has given the world a number of remarkable scientists, writers and creative figures, whose work even never marked with the seal of Nazism. One should remember the German writer Sigmund Graf, who made a mistake of connecting his life with the Nazi party of Germany and felt guilty towards his people until the end of his days. At the end of his life, he wrote, History is a policy that can no longer be corrected. Politics is a history that can still be corrected.